Hi there, welcome back to the new video. So today we'll be going through this paper which is titled as Blurt, Learning Robust Metric for Text Generation. This came out in the year of May 2020 from Google Research. So at very high level, this paper essentially introduces a new metric that is learnt. Unlike previously used metrics such as Rouge and Blue for evaluating the text generation or NLG systems. And with the name you might have already guessed, it uses some kind of blue and other metrics along with BERT, which is again the suffix what they have added from BERT. Okay, now let's go through the paper in detail. So they say text generation has made significant advances in last few years, which is pretty much true because you have GPT and its variants coming year after year and this year you have like GPT-3 and it's all over the news and if you see the examples, you'll start believing how good these models are. Then they say evaluation matrix have lagged behind as most popular choices such as blue and rouge may correlate poorly with human judgment. We propose BLIRT, a learned evaluation matrix based on BERT that can model human judgments with few thousand possibly biased training examples. So yeah, again, what they're saying is blue and rouge correlate poorly with how a human would actually judge NLG systems. So they propose a learned metric that is based on blurt and requires very few training samples to use that metric on your task specific data set. They also seem to propose a novel pre-training scheme that uses millions of synthetic examples to help model generalize. Okay, so which means there is a pre-training step involved that is helping model generalize well before you go about tuning the model with few thousand training examples that they have mentioned before. Okay. Then they mentioned about getting state-of-the-art results for last three years, WMT matrix, shared task, and web NLG competition. Okay, so before I go further to see what is the pre-training scheme that they're talking about and what role does BERT has to play in this, let me first discuss what blue and rouge are so that we have better clarity going forward. So rouge and blue are complementary metrics that are usually used in evaluating machine translation system, summarization systems, and other natural language generation tasks. So these are objective evaluations and inexpensive metrics, which are pretty fast to calculate. Unlike you would want to loop in a human who would kind of see how correct the generated text is, which is pretty expensive and time consuming. Also for that matter, Meteor is something that also people use for evaluating the translation systems. So talking about Rouge, there are many variants to how people calculate Rouge, one of which is called Rouge N, then you have Rouge L, Rouge S, and a couple of more. So Rouge is a very common metrics that people use in evaluating the summarization systems. And you'll be mostly seeing people using variations of Rouge N while doing so. So in this case, N stands for the n-gram number. So if n is equal to one, you are essentially looking at unigrams. If n is equal to two, you're looking at bigrams and so on and so forth. Here in this, L stands for longest common subsequence. That is based on identifying the longest common subsequence with the generated text and the original text. And in this, S stands for skip bigram. So bigram works by treating consecutive pairs of words, whereas skipgram, as the name suggests, doesn't consider just the consecutive pairs, but pairs of any two words that exist in that sentence. So since I mentioned about rouge and blue to be complementing each other, so rouge is usually seen to have recall nature. So the way you would calculate rouge between some original text and generated text is by calculating how many words from original text actually occur in the generated text. So these could be words, these could be n-grams, so for n-grams, it will be how many n-grams that occur in original text also occur in generated text. So that is how you calculate rouge. A complement of that is blue, where you look out for how many words or n-grams that were there in generated text were also present in original text. So blue gives you a notion of precision. Talking about Meteor, it is an extension of blue that also takes in consideration of stemming as well as synonym replacements. So one of the ways I've seen people combining rouge and blue to get a hybrid matrix is similar to how you would do in precision and recall in the case of classification matrix and all. So they simply do a harmonic mean of rouge and blue, which gives you two rouge 
blue divided by rouge plus blue. So this is a F1 measure that you get over rouge and blue. So I guess that should be enough for these metrics. Let's move forward and see the approach. They define X to be the reference sentence of length R where each XI is the token. So X is the original text of length R at token level. Then they define X bar, which is a prediction sentence of length P. Let this be the training data set of size N, where YI is the human rating that indicate the goodness of predicted sentence and original sentence. So what they're saying is we have predictions, we have original text, and we have the actual label Y, which was given by some human that corresponds to how good the generated text was with respect to the original text. And we have n such samples. So this becomes our training data set. And the goal is to learn a function f that would take generated text and original text and give out the label y. OK. Given the small amounts of rating data available, it is natural to leverage the unsupervised representation for this task. So they use BERT. So BERT is nothing but an encoder representation of transformer units. So it takes in two text. One is the original. One is what system generates. And outputs the sequence of word embeddings at the other end. So as you can see, the input was of R length. The output was of P length. Where each of these VXIs is nothing but the vector representation of the ith word in that input sentence. And VCLS is the vector representation of the special CLS token. So ideally, CLS vector representation is nothing but a pooled representation of all the word embeddings. Then they talk about adding a linear layer over the CLS vector, which is represented by this. So you have some weights that you need to learn and biases. Then they talk about using typical mean squared error loss because of the regression problem. As the label given by the human labeler would be some floating value within some range. That kind of signifies the similarity of generated text and original text. Okay, so this was the approach that authors essentially talk about in the fine tuning phase. Talking about the pre training on synthetic data, the key aspect of our approach is the pre training technique that we use to warm up BERT before fine tuning on rating data set. So, this is the second last step that author proposes that will help BERT understand language specific dependencies, post which one can use supervised data set that we talked about earlier and tune it to its respective problem. Okay, let's move forward. Authors talk about opting an automatic approach for generating synthetic sentence pairs by randomly perturbing 1.8 million segment Z from Wikipedia. They talk about three techniques, mask filling with BERT, back translation, and randomly dropping out words. So they have total of 6.5 million perturbations. So talking about the first perturbation, which is mask filling with BERT, they make use of pre-trained BERT and its ability to generate masked words in a sentence. That's what they write. We leverage this functionality by inserting random masks at random positions in Wikipedia sentences and fill them using the language model. So let's say you have a sentence. A perturbed version of such sentence would be you mask any random word or any sequence of words in this input sentence. So let's say I mask just one word at random and pass it through a pre-trained BERT. I'll be getting some prediction for that mask token. Let's say I get that. So the new sentence becomes, I like that book. So now you have a pair of sentence, which is I like this book and I like that book. So this essentially becomes your ground truth and generated sentence. So this is one kind of perturbation that they talk about. The second perturbation that they talk about is back translation, which is about generating the paraphrased version of the same sentence. So they specifically talk about English and some other language. So let's consider it's English and French. And also you'll be having the other model, which is French to English. So you have a sentence S, you pass it through English to French translation model. You get some representation S1. Now you pass this S1, which is in French to French to English model. And again, you get some representation S2. Now S2 will be the paraphrased representation of S. So again, this is a second scheme by which they generate the samples. The last scheme that they talk about is dropping words. They say we found it to be useful in our experiments to randomly drop words from the synthetic examples above to create other examples. So in this, they essentially drop out certain words in input sentence 
and get a newer version of that. Okay. So talking about the pretrained signals. So by now they have the data set ready of input samples and its perturbed version. So if we notice the perturbation schemes that authors have chosen will not drastically vary the sentence that you generate both in syntactic and semantic sense. So the next step is to augment each sentence with the pre-training signal TK. So this is the signal that model will have to optimize and will play a role in backpropagation. Good pre-training signals should capture a wide variety of lexical and semantic differences. At the same time, they should be cheap to obtain so that the approach can skate on large amount of synthetic data set. So they define a couple of metrics. Yeah, so this is the table that shows the list of metrics that they put in on the output end. So the way it goes is, let's say you have the input pair xi and xi bar, where xi is the original sentence and xi bar is the perturbed version that you have created using one of these three rules. Both of them go to BERT and at the output end, you capture the embedding from the CLS token. Once you have that, you put in six linear layers where each layer is responsible for one of these task outputs, which means one of them will be blue, then you will be having rules, then BERT score, which is the by default similarity score on which BERT was trained, which was next sentence prediction. Then you will be having the back translation likelihood. So if the sentence was generated using back translation, so what is the likelihood of the sentence that you generate? given you had the original sentence. Then you have the entailment task and then the back translation flag, which they define as Boolean. Again, which depends on if the augmented sentence was generated using back translation or not. So you will be calculating all these six numbers. Then you'll be back propagating the loss from all these six points in a weighted fashion, which would be tuning in all the parameters of the bird that exist as well as their respective layers. As we can see, the loss types are both regression and classification. So yeah, this is the full idea what paper is trying to introduce, where if you see all these numbers are automatically calculated. And since all of these matrix capture different aspects of similarity, so putting a weighted sum of loss, I guess over here is a good strategy. So again, all of these matrix could be calculated online or offline. They can be pre-calculated and then later used while training. So I guess we are done with the paper. That's all they had. Then they come up with the experiment section. So just to summarize the paper, the first step is to train a BERT model on next sequence prediction and mass language modeling if they are dealing with some specific domain. Once you have that, you go to step two where you generate the augmented sentences based on the schemes that authors have mentioned. Once you have that, you calculate all of those six matrix, which were rouge, blue, likelihood and all, and then pre-train the model again. Then as the last step, you generate a sample of thousand odd sequences, have a human in loop, and then treat it as a regression problem against the score the human has given. So which they call it as fine tuning. So these are the three steps that authors have talked about that has to be used in progression to get this blurt matrix. Okay, so I guess we are done. So if you like such content, do share it with your friends. I hope the walkthrough was worth your time. And do subscribe to the channel for more interesting videos. Thank you.